Welcome to another instructional snippet. In this snippet, we will be calculating the volumetric flow rate through a hydraulic turbine and its connecting pipeline. Here is the problem statement. Note that the turbine output is 400 watts of power. Also note that we will be working in SI units. The links and diameters for both the inlet pipe to the turbine, pipe 1, and the outlet pipe, pipe 2, are given. Both pipes are cast iron with a roughness of 0.046 millimeters. The relative roughness for both pipes are calculated and provided here. We will be using conservation of energy to solve this example. First, let's identify two points for the application of conservation of energy. We pick the top of the water level in the tank and label it as point A. For point B, we choose the outlet of the second pipe, which is discharging to atmosphere. We will also be using Darcy Weisbach's equation to calculate head loss. Finally, we also need an equation that relates the power of the turbine to the turbine head and volumetric flow rate. Note that we are using dimensions of energy per weight so all heads will be in length, which in this example will be meters. Now let's simplify as shown. Note that the datum is selected at the bottom of the tank, which is also the same elevation as point B. Note that the unknown is the volumetric flow rate Q. We need the friction factors for both pipe 1 and pipe 2 to calculate the head loss. We will be using the Moody chart or Moody diagram, which relates the friction factor as a function of relative roughness and Reynolds number. To calculate the Reynolds number, we need the velocity, but the flow is unknown. This problem will require iteration. The approximate relative roughness curves for both of the pipes are noted. Since we have to guess friction factors for each pipe, let's start with friction factors that are valid over a wide range of Reynolds numbers. We select a friction factor that is valid over the flat or horizontal portion of the relative roughness curves which occur at the higher Reynolds numbers. We will have to check and verify that these guesses are reasonable, but hopefully this approach will minimize the number of necessary iterations. The dotted lines indicate our initial guesses for F1 and F2. We read the values for the friction factors off of the left axis. F2 is approximately 0.02. F1 is approximately 0.018. Before we start with the iterations, we still need to solve for the head of the turbine. The details and equations are provided here. Let's review our iteration process. The left hand side is fixed to the head at point A, in this case 20 meters. We guess a flow and then calculate values for the four terms on the right hand side of the energy equation. We then check to see if their sum equals 20. But even if it does, we still need to go back and check that our friction factors are reasonable. If the flow and or friction factors have not converged, we will iterate as necessary. Hopefully this process will be clear as we go through a few iterations. Let's do our first iteration. Let's guess an initial flow rate of 0.003 cubic meters per second. The sum of the four terms on the right hand side of the equation is 18.4 meters. That's not close enough. Before we go to the next iteration, we calculate the Reynolds numbers and check the friction factors. In reality, when I picked 0.003 cubic meters per second, I already did this, but these are the normal steps in our iteration process. For the next iteration, let's go with 0.004 cubic meters per second. Following the same steps, we see that we are still not balancing the equation. We should also note that our original friction factors are still reasonable with the updated Reynolds numbers. Spoiler alert, our initial guess of the friction factors are good, we'll never have to change them for this example. But be aware that is not always the case. Now let's try 0.005 cubic meters per second. Results indicate that we overshot, so let's split the difference on our next iteration. 
Noting the difference, we try 0.0045 cubic meters per second. Right hand side is 19.9 meters, which is pretty good, and I'm tempted to stop there. However, let's try one more iteration to see if we can get closer. For our final iteration, we choose 0.00453 cubic meters per second, and we obtain 20.01 meters. There's no point trying to improve on this answer. The uncertainty in our friction factor that we've obtained by reading off the Moody chart does not justify trying to get closer than that. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. If so, please like and subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.